Thank you very much, Dr. Talaya, for the invitation. Um, I have no financial conflict of interest. So I was asked to talk to you briefly about our work on the use of cancer goggles um, as a way to aid surgical resection of tumors, um, which we are now beginning to also develop for endoscopic applications. Um, our goals for this application were to identify, to help the surgeons identify cancer um, and positive lymph nodes so that there will be more realistic and objective um, resection in, in real time, as well as to enhance the accuracy and speed of, um, of tumor resection in the operating room. We also want to make sure that um, in times of confusion, there's no guesswork there, make it more subject, objective than subjective, and to prevent uh, second surgeries, especially for breast cancer patients, as well as uh, local relapse for um, uh, glioma patients. So we have three approaches we are using to tag cancer cells selectively. We've been fortunate to discover a very small molecule that can be used to tag all types of solid tumors, um, emitting fluorescence in the near infrared, and which allows us to then co um, uh, integrate it or register that with visible wavelengths. Um, we also came up with ways of using the same tag and turning on the lights to eradicate small lesions, especially those that you are not completely sure where they are or how to eliminate them. I will talk briefly about the third component of our work, which is ways to visualize tumors. Um, for this audience, um, there's nothing new here, except that what we are interested in doing, we want it to be affordable and can be taken to any part of the world and make it in real-time feedback for surgical resections. So, guided by the fact that we do not want to have any footprint in the operating room, we want something that's very simple, and that led us um, to focus on the use of uh, cancer goggles, or the goggle system, if it will show up here, it did show up previously, there you go. Um, the idea here, before the Google Glasses or HoloLens that we are seeing today, we started working on this whole technology where you have a head-mounted device and camera that can integrate both the visible light and near-infrared fluorescence. So we use the near-infrared fluorescence, a small dye that attacks all these cancer cells, emit light, and then we integrate that with the visible light RGB that is conventionally available and allowing you to actually see in real time as well as encode the near infrared fluorescence. So here are the, the models that we used here. First of all, we had to deal with the illumina uh, illumination model, which is simply to make sure that we do not turn off the surgical light during surgery. Uh, so we did do a lot of reiterations, uh, light modulation and frequency encoding of light to discriminate or distinguish it from the room light. Um, at the end, for open surgery, we find a very simple solution, which is only about $5. You take 3M filter, put over the surgical light, it takes away all the infrared confounding signals, and then you can leave the lights on. Uh, which does not affect anything that's done in the operating room. And then we were also interested in looking at the imaging model, which is to say that we do not want to only encode one light. We want the RGB to be present as well as the infrared. So we designed various types of sensors to encode into our camera. Um, in fact, there's a most recent one we published that is even more sensitive than what we've been using right now that allows us to not reject any component of the weak light that we are using, but instead enhance um, the detection sensitivity using that method. Uh, the processing model, the key component here is to make sure that we are able to um, diagnose, I mean, we are able to uh, uh, register the light and present it in real time. Uh, so that there's no lag time between the images you are seeing and what's projected directly into the glasses. We also want to make sure it's super light, uh, so we went all plastic based, including the lenses and every component of it to minimize the weight, uh, making sure that it's very uh, simple. 
The first iteration used what we call the video see-through approach, uh, which is actually what we are now adapting for the endoscopic surgeries um, with the cameras on both sides, allowing us to visualize in a video stream in real time. Um, the optical see-through version that we have is a little bit different because we want to be able to visualize the real eye, touch the patients for the open surgeons, and also be able to sense the distance as your head moves back and forth, we'll be able to uh, reiterate and know exactly how far you are from the focal point. Um, the light source as well uh, allows us to dim this light opacity to allow you to see clearly and liquid crystals that allow us to move through various spectral convolution. Working with Lumos right now, we have a cool factor one that allows you to wear it uh, super light and the cameras are very light as well. And it's the see-through, you don't need to uh, wear any special glasses to see that you can feel and touch the patient, patient as well. Um, we've done quite a lot of um, clinical studies in these areas are uh, proved to do, uh, we're still ongoing there, looking at how to apply this technology for cancer resection. Um, the contrast agents we are using is indocine in green dye, but hopefully by June, we'll be applying LS301, which is really specific for cancer applications. Um, here is Dr. Julie Magentola, who was the first one, a breast surgeon that used it to look at breast cancer. And whatever she's seeing through the goggles, we can project it to anywhere in the room or in a teaching class, a teaching tool for students, allowing her to talk through to them what's going on in real time. Um, here is an example of what you see. Once the patient, you inject it with the dye, it accumulates in the tumor, and in real time, you can see the regions that are being highlighted, um, and you can quickly know where the tumors are or where the positive lymph node is, and then selectively remove them uh, in real time. And we were also impressed to see uh, additionally that even though we thought originally that you would only be able to see superficial lesions, um, very few millimeters, here is a positive lymph node that was deep, up to one centimeter much deeper into the tissue. Um, there is blurry, of course. It's not high resolution to start with, but then once you open up, you can find the lymph node light up selectively, allowing you to remove it without a problem. So this was very exciting for us to know that we can see several centimeters deeper in tissues. An area we also have been using these glasses is um, uh, looking at margin assessment in breast cancer patients. Um, once you remove the tumors, uh, uh, you can turn it around to see if there's any tag fluorescence in any section. Uh, in this case, this is a lady that has a positive node uh, uh, margin that now you can go back in real time and be able to resect whatever is left there without problems and the patient can then go home without need for second surgeries. Um, finally, um, we also did a lot of work at uh, Liver Institute in Fudan, uh, uh, um, liver, uh, Fudan uh, liver Institute in Shanghai, where we looked at uh, ACC resection in the operating room. Uh, for this application, we, we had a lot of studies I don't have time to go through, but just a highlight here is when we did intrahepatoarterial injection of this uh, dye into, into, into the patient, uh, within the first 10 minutes or thereabout, you can really see and uh, highlight all the tumors, um, providing us evidence, especially in the case of patient seven, where you could have seen clearly, this is where the surgeon might have removed uh, in anticipation of the MR and CT signals, but there were other microscopic lesions very close by that would have been missed and now for, can be easily removed as uh, uh, with the aid of the cancer goggles in real time. So we are expanding this, to, as I mentioned, to come up with the endoscopic analogs of this and taking it to different parts of the world um, as we hope for final approval by the FDA uh, to combine it with the LS301 for surgical resection of cancer. It's interoperative, it provides real-time feedback, high sensitivity, we have the zoomable goggles, wherever you are suspicious of something, you can take a pen scope to see that particular cell in question and make sure that you can remove it. Uh, high throughput, uh, high resolution, and user-friendly. It really, you do not need time 
um, is self-intuitive really on its own. So we've developed these Gago systems and then we are beginning to open up a multi-clinical trial uh, centers to explore how best to make sure that it works. I just want to acknowledge a lot of students that worked on this over the years and supported the program, collaborators that helped me with the design and engineering of the system and funding from the NIH. Thank you for your attention.